we are moving on to a review of Ozark Season 2, which uh, the reason why we started a little bit later today is because I just wrapped up watching all 10 of the episodes. I was grateful that it wasn't 13 episodes. This is an exhausting show. I thought the first season was really well made. I'm a huge fan of Jason Bateman. I wish he was my friend. Scott and I used to say that all the time on the show. Every time we'd see him in anything, we just loved him. And I continue to love him. Laura Linney plays his wife, and she's pretty solid as well. She really kind of performs her moments, though. And sometimes I, I really get taken out of the show. There's a naturalism that Jason Bateman has in his role as this uh, accountant that gets, gets drawn deeper and deeper into all of these disgusting, grotesque crimes. And it's kind of like a uh, Breaking Bad-style journey where this... Uh, relatively mousy individual becomes a hardcore criminal, you know, and has to kind of deal with a, a cartel fighting against uh, some, uh, you know, Ozark-based uh, drug lords, and uh, he, he's right in the middle. He's trying to create legitimate businesses to launder tons of money and pay back the cartel who feels uh, like they've been betrayed by uh, Marty and his former partner, and I won't, I won't try to spoil too much of what happens in season one. Um, and, you know, I liked the momentum and the escalation of season one, but I can re remember feeling, and I t said this in my review of season one, that it was just so implausible and so exhausting. And there just wasn't a reprieve. It felt like there was a desperation in every episode to just make it so larger than life. And that continues in season two. And in every episode, which I think is par for the course in this crowded, uh, you know, very solid sort of TV universe and landscape that we're in right now. There's so many great choices to invest in our time. But there, there remains this believable earthiness and a realism in this family dynamic, but all of the things that happen around them are just so cutthroat and so consistent and so persistent. And you're just sitting back going, that is just ridiculous. They'd be so captured. The FBI would be all over them here. These guys would be so dead. They'd be so... So you're constantly screaming at the screen saying, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Somebody... Uh, came back to life after almost drowning in the first season. And in the second season, um, y you know, children feel completely betrayed and they go against their parents, all under the watchful sort of, uh, you know, terrorizing eye of uh, cartel overlords and henchmen and FBI agents. And the family is cracking. And the one thing that really gets me down about this show is that there's no virtue in it. It's just that it's not even gray, it's just murk. You know, and they shoot in a beautiful part of the world. Uh, you know, some of the landscape shots are gorgeous, but the lighting and everything is sort of manufactured to just make you depressed. It's all gray, and and they dial up the uh, um, the contrast and they they pull out the colors and everybody just. It's like you can watch wrinkles just appearing on Jason Bateman's face as episodes go. It's like it's like that's the visual effect, you know, and and so it really gets you down. And after. I'm a fan of these high drama shows, you know, don't get me wrong, I love The Sopranos, I love Deadwood, I love The Shield, I liked Sons of Anarchy until I couldn't take it anymore, um, and I love Breaking Bad, but I, I just feel like this constant drumbeat of, of paranoia and anxiety and depression and depravity, it weighs on you, and that's what I felt when I was watching this, it's like, who do I get invested in? Who's innocent here? And that's what the, the show is kind of trying to tell you, uh, is that we're none of us are innocent and we all have these this darkness within us even this you know relatively um, sympathetic uh, you know family uh, but it makes it really hard to care because it's just a bunch of evil just butting up against each other and it's different levels of evil and different levels of uh, heinous crime and violence uh, and I felt very similarly towards the end of, Shadow, of uh, Sons of Anarchy um, and Deadwood could get a bit much. Or some episodes where I like that. And I'm not particularly squeamish. It's just that idea of squishing all of that stuff in over and over and over again. And uh, also the, the, the feeling of impending doom is like that's, that's what you're watching. So it's like anxiety porn. It's like you're watching this stuff and you're just like, oh my god, I like... Are, are who's who's gonna die? Or how is this family? Are the kids gonna get hurt? Is that baby gonna get hurt? And the one guy, the one person that's that honestly has a, 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 like a light in the character, 
and the performance is actually really solid. Been through hell. But the one character that is in this show where it's like, okay, well, this person is sort of representing a sense of morality and a sense of, uh, of um, atonement and, and uh, questioning a lot of, uh, you know, ideas and, the, and approaches that each of the other characters is sort of going through in their world. Well, I bet you can guess what happens to that character, you know? And so when that does happen to that character, it's just like, oh, okay, God, like, who, who do I care about? And uh, so I finished the season. It's very smart, and it's very well made, and there's a lot of beauty to it, and, it's, and it moves quick. But I don't really care about those characters. And I honestly wish that it all wrapped up with a nice tidy bow for season two, because that would make it like two you know, a very long film, but it would make it a nice complete package, but it isn't. There's likely going to be more. I, I suspect that people are addicted to this. Uh, it, it has that Breaking Bad kind of, um, uh, this is bad for me, but I'm watching it kind of hook. Uh, but without all of the comedy and the uh, nuance and the subtleties and the, I mean, Breaking Bad was high art and this isn't quite, you know, uh, despite and I, I single out Jason Bateman because he's he's a phenomenal performer. I think he's been an underappreciated gem in uh, in movies and TV shows for a long time. He's terrific, and I believe every minute that he's in, um, and you see him go through hell. But uh, yeah, I didn't love Ozark season two, and I certainly don't love any of the characters in it. I'm going to give Ozark season two a seven out of ten. <laughs>